Welcome back as we continue our, con our discussion with DA leader Helen Zilla. Premier Zilla, let's just end the, the conversation about Ahang. Don't you think this, this race issue that, that you've referred to, um, the need to have a credible black leader in the DA um, selling the message is leading to a lot of mistakes on your part, on the DA's part. I'm reminded here by, uh, uh, of uh, the welcoming of Buyelekaya Dalinjebo, the, um, um, the Abatembu king, into the DA. Now, that was someone who was totally, totally discredited. And yet, again, you welcomed him because people view you as being desperate to have these black faces in the DA. Well, we've got many, many credible black leaders in the DA. We've got the most non-racial leadership and the most non-racial party that South Africa has ever had. So and the why truth do you is need a Dalinjebo? Why, did, well, do, why did you need a, a Mampela Rampela who has no political on, standing? On King Buyele Kaya Dalinjebo. Well, but I let, do look down well, on him because he's sexist. Thing. He may well be sexist. Mm. He's only an ordinary member of the DA. And if I had to go around to everybody in the DA and say, have you ever made a sexist remark before? We wouldn't have any members or very few members. So the important thing is that he's an ordinary member of the DA and we don't go around and do an ideology test on every single one of our members. But the interesting thing is that we've been doing spectacularly well in by-elections in his broader area. Just the other day we had a by-election. But that's not because of your black leaders. It may be because Athol Tollip is a good uh, Eastern Cape you leader. You are very right. He's a very good Eastern Cape leader. And Viliswam Venya, whose constituency that is, is absolutely excellent. So but why isn't it you're, pu you're not but pushing when policy, my you're pushing these discredited characters, people who turn around and say, oh, you know, these people have forced me into an agreement which they could have, uh, Manpela Rampela could have, uh, you know, gone ahead and just implemented what she needed to implement. Justice, we have a full policy conference last year. I don't think it even made television. We've put out a whole new suite of policies. I bet you couldn't tell us what they are. No, we I could tweet tell you about, about them. The economic policy, we, but let's oh, go that's on. good. Mm. It's better than Peter Bruce of Business Day, that's for sure. But we've spent a lot of time pushing our economic policies out there. But the truth is that when President Mandela's king, Uyele Kaya Dalindiebo, says to people, it's okay to be DA, it has an enormous impact. I stand up and say it's not okay to be up on murder charges or on homicide charges and be a member of the DA. But don't you believe in innocent until proven guilty? He has been proven guilty. He's just on appeal. He's on appeal, but that's critical. I mean, you know how many cases we win on appeal because acting judges who are looking for a permanent appointment hear the case at first. You see, that's the great risk, Justice. Mm. South Africa's democracy is in a race against time. The National Prosecuting Authority has been colonized by Jacob Zuma's clique. Now there are terrible stories about the IEC being partisan and having been found guilty of being so already in one instance in the electoral court. This is terrifying for our democracy. But that's a policy issue. No, it's not a policy issue. Let me tell you. No, no you should be pushing that policy we instead push of that policy picking up all these, all these discredited leaders. We push that policy every day. That's why we're taking Jacob Zuma to the court for the fifth time or the National Prosecuting Authority to court for the fifth time to get reasons why the charges against Jacob Zuma were withdrawn. But the only reason and the only way, Justice, and it's really important for me to say this clearly, the only way we can win the race against time for our democracy is to change government through the ballot box. And there are a whole suite of strategies that come into that. And one day in 10 years' time, if we succeed, you and many other people will look back and be very grateful that we made it easier for people to cross the bridge to come to the DA. But, I mean, the, your attempts so far have blown up again, um, not, not failing to uh, audit uh, Mampela Rampele and the way that she takes her decisions. What must I audit? Well, you, must, uh, you, you could have sat down with her and said, exactly, are you going to bring your people along? This is going to be hard. There's going to be criticism. People are going to make fun of us, going to laugh at us. And they did. But if, if she were a person of metal um, and had stayed the course, then you wouldn't be in the, in the troubles that you face now defending yourself about this, this merger. I know how to run the DA. Well, we run it together. And I went to the federal executive and we discussed it there in depth. When she says I'm going to consult my structures, I have to accept her word for it. She was the one, she was the one who insisted that we went public the very next day. Didn't suit me. 
We reached an agreement on the Monday that she would be our presidential candidate and we would have a technical task team that would manage the incorporation of our Khang's branches, members and volunteers into the DA. And she wanted to go public the very next day. I said, hold on. She said, no, we must because this is beginning to leak. Who is going to be the DS presidential candidate in this election? That's not for me to decide. Who's going to decide? Federal executive. They but decided last time. We're going to decide again. When will we know? Are you, are you running for the position? Well, no one runs for the position, frankly. We discuss who would be the best person in that position, and then we nominate that person. Would you like to be the presidential candidate of the DA? Well, you've, got the, you've got the credibility, you've got the brand. Well, I certainly wouldn't object to it, but I supported Mampira's candidacy. That blew up, as you rightly say, and now all things are possible. Do you have a preferred candidate yourself? I actually haven't thought of that because what we're doing at the moment is getting our premier candidates sorted out and other election strategies. You've spoken a lot about the realign realignment of the opposition. You've had talks with COPE, with the UDM, other opposition parties. Mm -hmm. How's that coming along? Well, COPE was too busy fighting and killing itself. The UDM is also a one-man band and is phasing out of politics. All the opposition parties really are except the Democratic Alliance. And so it makes sense for people who share the values and vision of this party to join us. A lot of people say Julius Malema is coming on strongly. Have you yes, he is, and he's going to grow strongly, but the jury is out as to whether he will manage the transition from being a loud and forceful voice to running a party with internal structures, systems, processes. That is what makes a party survive in the long term, not a leader with a big ego. Why do you want too much on the ANC? Well, we want to point out the difference between their jobs offer and our jobs offer in this election. Our job in the official opposition is to expose the hollow rhetoric and bogus promises in the ANC's manifesto. They've promised six million EPWP jobs in the next 10 years. Six million EPWP They're jobs. job opportunities, as they say. And they've admitted that most of them will be EPWP jobs. So they call them job opportunities. The DA's economic model, and you'll know because you say you've read our economic mm. policy, the DA's economic model is to run government in such a way that it attracts investment, grows the economy, and creates jobs together with a youth wage subsidy and so various other incentives. So why do you choose this particular platform to highlight your, your issues? Because that highlights it. The point is no one except you goes and reads long policy documents. So you have to do it in a graphic way so that people get it. And you march for six million real jobs. You march to the ANC. Why don't you march to government who should implement these things? It's, uh, the ANC just sets the policy and then it sends its candidates to, to government to do this. Surely you should be marching on President Zuma. You understand the difference between party and state? I Justice, do. this is the ANC's manifesto yes. in an election between the ANC and the DA. We're contrasting it's party got, manifestos. It here. won the last its election. It's got people in there, uh, in government, who are implementing its policies as we speak. Or not implementing the policies, as the case may be. Sure. But one of the biggest failures of the ANC is that they don't understand the difference between the party and the state. We do. And you're blaring the, the two yourself. No, not at all. This is an ANC manifesto and an ANC policy promise. But the ANC can, can blow hot air right now when it gets into, into, uh, into government, uh, fail to implement. So really, the implementers are President Zuma and his cabinet, and that's why you should be marching to them. But why are you... Why we're, talking, are you we're talking about election manifestos here. We often protest against Jacob Zuma in various places in his capacity as president, and we debate him in parliament in his capacity as president. I wish in an election campaign he would simply come out and debate me. He never has once, as is the convention in most democracies. Well, I will extend the invitation to him and to you to come I'd on love the show that. and do that. Um, don't you believe, as happened with your march on Kosati, that there could be fatalities in this march, that it could happen that, as happened in 1994 with the IFP, there could be fatalities? Yes, there have been threats. There have been terrible threats of violence by Kosatu, by the ANC Youth League, by the South African Communist Party, and there have been very grave threats that should have charges against them immediately, and we have laid charges, and I'd be fascinated if they get followed up by the police. That's another major question. But if, in a democracy, one party is undermining the Constitution, it doesn't mean to say that the other party has to give up its rights. 
that way we will give up our constitution clause I'm by clause. I'm not saying you should give up your threats. rights, but you should be more responsible, perhaps, knowing the kind of climate that we operate in. So how does one give up one's rights responsibly, Justice? Well, you, you make an assessment of the situation and you say these people may, and they have in the past, that's happened at Kosati, um, attacked us with stones and other instruments. And so perhaps we shouldn't do this and we should highlight that fact. Well, the important thing is that the police should be doing their job. They should be defending our right to march peacefully. They certainly defended Julius Malema's rights to march to Nkandla. They didn't protect ours. And it's just about time that the police also protected the Democratic Alliance's rights to act in terms of the Constitution. How, um, you've mentioned the by-elections. How well do you think the DA will do in these coming elections? I think we'll grow, and our aim is to grow with every election. But the trouble is, as I said earlier, South Africa and its democracy is in a race against time. We haven't got all the time in the world. Another what kind five of percentage are you going for? 30 percent? Well, I'm certainly not going to man, man, uh, talk about percentages here because percentages are very finite. Anything can happen in politics. As you see, a week is a very long time in politics. Anything can happen, but I think we'll grow, and I hope grow nicely. Helen Zilla, thanks so much for your time. It's always a pleasure, Justice. Thank you very much. And I take you on on this promise of a debate with Jacob Zuma. I look forward to sending the letters to yourself and the President of there. South Africa. After the break, our winner and loser of the week. Stay with us. News that moves. ENCA.com.